Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks for joining us. I say that especially if this happens to be your very first time to be listening to the broadcast. We study God's Word together, and right now, my Bible is setting open to the book of Leviticus, chapter 13. Believe it or not, we're walking through this Old Testament legal section of the law, and we're finding practical value for us in this New Testament era, and That will be true today from Leviticus 13. So get your Bible, if at all possible, get something on which you can jot some notes, please. I also have a gospel tract in my hand. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. We're talking about a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. I want to encourage you to get some tracts from us today. In just a minute, I'll say more about that. But as I make this broadcast, tax season here in the United States has just passed. And the good news is my wife and I are getting money back. But to make that happen, I went to an expert for help. Because frankly, nobody expects me to know all I need to know about tax laws. But not only that, when I have car problems or plumbing problems, electric or medical problems, in those cases, I also seek the help of experts. People are never surprised when I say this to them. We seek help with virtually every problem that we have except one. It's called sin. We don't seek help with sin problems. If you or I, if we have a persistent sin problem, we need to seek some help. At least twice in the New Testament, believers are called on to put to death the sins of the flesh. Then those two passages went on to list examples of sins of the flesh. We come today to Leviticus 13 and guess what it deals with. It deals with identifiable fleshly diseases, fleshly problems. And guess what else? It's going to give a plan of action. So tell me, my friend, are you struggling with one of those sins of the flesh listed here in the New Testament? If you are, I'll almost guarantee you somebody else has spotted it. But today, we learn what to do about it. Get your Bible. Get something on which you can jot some notes, please. While you're doing that, let me encourage you to get some gospel tracts from us. At the end of the program, my announcer is going to give you three ways by which you can contact us and give us your name and mailing address, and we'll send you free of charge a sample packet of our tracts containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts. And one of them in that sample packet is this one. It's called It's Free. It is free, and on the front face, there is a man's wallet with credit cards coming out because we all understand what credit cards are to do. Now, the power and the impact of this gospel tract is for this one reason. So many times, people are looking for a clear, simple way to share the gospel one-on-one with a lost person, and that's what this track is designed for. As you open the track up, it's designed for this one purpose. On the left-hand side, you'll see these words, what is free? And the answer is salvation is free, and then all we have is five Bible verses emphasizing that salvation is a gift of God, a free gift of God. On the right-hand side of the track, as it's open, the question is this, where can I find it? Where can I find the free gift? Answer, in God's risen Son. And four Bible verses are there to explain that this gift of eternal life is in the person of Jesus Christ. This is designed to help you have something in your hand ready to walk a person through the gospel. Somebody the other day showed me theirs. They had taken this track, the inside two pages, 
folded them together, laminated them to keep them handy in their shirt pocket to help them share the gospel. What a good plan. Now, friend, by the way, we are right now on the verge of printing 1.3 million gospel tracts in the country of Pakistan, and every time we print there, thousands of people come to Christ. Would you like to help us do that? Would you like to extend your personal outreach to the world, especially in Pakistan? It's going to cost me $22,000 to make that happen. Consider helping us with that project, would you please? Well, if your Bible's open with me, go with me to the book of Leviticus, chapter 13, verses 1 and 2 say this, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, or a bright spot, that it be in the skin of his flesh like the plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, and or unto one of his sons of the priest. Go to verse 9. And when the plague of leprosy is in a man, then he shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall see him, and behold, if the rising be white in the skin, and have turned the hair white, and there be raw flesh in the rising, it's an old leprosy in the skin of his flesh, and he's going to pronounce him unclean. I'm going to verse 14 now. But when raw flesh appeareth in him, he shall be unclean, and the priest shall see the raw flesh, and pronounce him to be unclean, for the raw flesh is unclean. It is a leprosy. Well, for time's sake, I need to stop reading right there. Now, Leviticus 13 is all about one basic issue, fleshly diseases, fleshly diseases. And the word translated leprosy in this chapter was a far more general word than just what you and I typically think about leprosy. It was a word used for many abnormalities that could afflict a person's skin or be in their clothes or even on the walls of their homes. Now, here is my outline for chapter 13 and 14 together because these two chapters are linked here. I've got four words all beginning with the letter F, like in the word football. Are you ready? Here we go. Chapter 13, verses 1 to 46. The word is fleshly, fleshly diseases tested and treated. Then chapter 13, verse 47 to verse 59, the word is fabric. Fabric diseases tested and treated. What happened when these diseases, this, this plague here got in people's garments? Chapter 14, verses 1 to 32, fowls and skin diseases. The word fowls there refers to birds. Fowls and skin diseases. Don't miss tomorrow. Tomorrow's broadcast is going to be great fun out of chapter 14 in that section. But then the last half of chapter 14, verse 33 to the end, and is called fortress. The fortress and diseases. By the word fortress, I'm referring to your home. What happens when a plague shows up and the walls of your home? Now, whenever skin diseases were discovered in the Old Testament there, and they continued for any length of time, action had to be taken. And I could actually summarize chapter 13 this way. It's, it's this. If you see a problem, you need to see a priest. If you see a problem, you need to see a priest. The Old Testament priests had far more areas of responsibility than present day pastors do. The Old Testament priests also served as a medical person, and that's what we see going on here in chapter 13. Now, I've got a fuller outline for chapter 13, but let me at least for today give you the four signals that the Old Testament priest was looking for to help help him determine how serious these fleshly issues were. And there's great pictures here, but I won't get to the pictures. But here are the four things the priest was looking for. Number one, spots on the skin. Number two, spots that went deeper than just the surface of the skin. Number three, the spreading of that spot or the spreading of a rash on the skin. And then number four, if there was raw flesh, if there was raw flesh. Now, all of these are found there in chapter 13. My beloved friend, I am going to apply this passage to our day. 
believers in the New Testament era are called on to put to death the sins of the flesh. These sins that, although they always start in our thought processes, these sins show up in our life, and guess what? Others can see them. Well, what was the Old Testament Jewish community to do when fleshly diseases were showing up in the life of their own body or somebody else near to them? Five things were to be done, five words beginning with the letter R. Here they are, quickly. Number one, they were to react. They were to react. When fleshly issues were seen, the one who saw it was not to be complacent about potential disease. Number two, respond. The Old Testament Jewish person was to take the one with the skin issue to the priest. Number three, regulate. The priest was to isolate the diseased person. They did it for two reasons. One was to really give them time to detect if it was a serious problem or not. But number two, protect others from catching the contagious issue. The fourth R word is the word review. The priest had regularly set apart time appointments to see if the diseased person was getting better or worse. And then the fifth word is remove. The status of being called an unclean person was to be removed once the problem was seen to be not a real issue or once the disease was healed. The good news, skin diseases, sins of the flesh can be healed In Colossians 3, we have a list of some sins of the flesh that New Testament saints can actually struggle with. It's not intended to be a complete list, just a clear listing of some of the sin issues. Things like fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, anger, malice, wrath, blasphemy, filthy communication, lying. These are sins of the flesh, and guess what? Others can see these. And beloved, when you and I spot these sin issues in ourselves or another believer, we need to act. If a brother is overtaken in a fault, we need to go with a desire to restore the sinning one. When we spot fellow saints with sins of the flesh, we are to react, respond, if need be, regulate, review, and hopefully, Lord willing, restore, because they deal with the sin issue. Too many times in the New Testament church, we become complacent, and sin never stays static in the life of a person or If it's allowed to breed in a local church, it'll never stay static. Listener friend, we go to all kinds of experts for help with all kinds of issues. Why not the sin issue? That is one of the reasons God has given to us godly pastors. I have a godly pastor. Lord willing, you have a godly pastor. There are answers to for believers who are struggling with sins of the flesh. It can be it can be conquered and Christ can bring us the victory through his death, burial and resurrection to Calvary. Dear believer friend, do not let sin kick you from pillar to post. Go to the expert, go to your pastor. Let's find answers to the sin struggles in our life. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.